Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the workshop. It's time for another DIY video today. Now I'll just warn you right from the start, this one's gonna have a lot of sections to it, so I will put chapter markers in the timeline for you, and you can skip around for what you want. But today, I'm gonna attempt to make a spring reverb pedal for about 50 bucks or less. The idea for this came from a project I did back in February of this year, and you might recognize this. This is a, um, I called it, I think the DIY echo mic, um, but this is one of those little echo mics for kids, and I just made it electric, put a pickup in there, and it's now a reverb mic that you can plug in. And this wasn't my idea originally, I actually got this from a different channel. But in any case, after I got done with it, I had a thought and I was like, you know what? If you mic'd a guitar amp with this, a guitar amp that didn't have reverb, would it sound like it had reverb? And I tried it and it does work. is you get a fully wet signal so it's really muddy so then what I tried is I took a regular mic along with this mic and pointed two mics at the guitar amp and so you could have a clean signal and a, and a wet signal so to speak <laughs> problem is then you've got to have two mics so I actually had an idea for a hot minute you know this piece here comes off and I thought if I could get a little mic capsule because you can buy those on Amazon and stuff if I get a little mic capsule and put it in there then I could actually have a dry signal and a wet signal in one mic and I may still go back and do that but as I started to think through that I was like no nah, that's not really what I want to do because then I'm still having to point this at an amp uh, to get that you know, sort of reverb effect. What I want is an effect, something you can plug in with a quarter inch in and a quarter inch out. And if you go out there and research this topic, folks, there's a lot of information. I'm not just talking about on YouTube, all over the internet, there's a lot of information about this topic. And uh, I'll spare you all of the, all the details, but effectively what a spring reverb is, is you've got some sort of actuator, then you've got a spring, and then you've got some sort of pickup on the other end. So what happens is that actuator is, is actually producing vibrations, sending it through the spring, and then the little pickup at the other end is, is picking up those vibrations and sending it back to, you know, to whatever's being amplified, uh, to the amplifier, I should say. So effectively, the spring reverb is just putting sound through a spring, like literally, that's all it's doing. Um, and if you've ever taken like the reverb tank out of a guitar amp and turned it over and played through it, and you actually touch the spring, you can feel the sound waves going through the spring. And, now you can use a spring reverb just as a studio effect. People do it all the time or, you know, plate reverbs or whatever. But the problem is you get a 100% wet signal out of that. So what you need to do is you need to have like two channels where you have a signal for your clean and a signal for your affected and then you kind of blend them. But I really wanted to have more like a reverb pedal, like something that has kind of a wet dry control. So I think I've got an idea here today and this is gonna be complete prototyping so I can't guarantee it's gonna work. Uh, but I'm gonna try to make a spring reverb pedal. So let's look at what I'm gonna use. Okay, so for starters, I got this wine box, and this is what I'm gonna try to use for the enclosure. This is wood, um, bottle of wine came in here. You've probably seen some of these. And if you open it, <clears throat> it's actually got uh, like this little divider in here, which I might be able to reuse. But the next thing you see is another echo mic. Now, you don't necessarily need to buy an echo mic. What you need is a spring, but I know that the springs that are in these work pretty well. So that's why I just am gonna take the spring out of the echo mic and I'm just gonna throw the rest of it away. After that, I've got one of these little Artec uh, guitar amp kits. And these are like perfect people make cigar box amps and things like that out of these. Um, and it's just a little amp kit that uh, it's like a, a two watt amp, I believe. And it's, I think I'm gonna use this to amplify the signal going into the spring. Next, I got a pair of quarter inch jacks here. Nothing special about those, just a couple mono jacks for the in and the out. It's a nine volt battery clip that I'll use to uh, secure the nine volt battery for the amp. This is a blend pot. And um, these are what you use like on a guitar to, you can use one of these to blend between the bridge and, and neck pickups rather than having a three-way switch. And so I'm gonna see if I can use this to blend between the original signal and the affected signal to effectively give me a wet dry control. Now I'm not sure how well it's gonna work because they're gonna be at different signal levels. So we'll find out, but that's what I'm gonna use this for. 
Finally, we've got a piezo pickup here. This is a 35 millimeter piezo disc. I think about any size would work, but this is what I'm gonna use for the pickup on the other end of the spring. By the way, the box has some of this like packing material stuff in here that was for the bottle. But the last thing is this, and this is probably the hardest thing to find. This is a surface transducer. In fact, I'll take it out of the bag so you can see it better. But effectively, you put signal on this and it produces vibrations on this little plate. Um, basically, it's very similar to a speaker without a cone. Like if you think about the paper speaker cone and the basket and all that, just take that off and this is basically what's left. Okay, so here's the diagram I made. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen so it's easier to read. But effectively, I'm gonna take the signal in and I'm gonna send it to that little RTEC amp. And then I'm gonna send the output from there to the surface transducer, which is gonna be hooked to the echo mic spring, which is then gonna go to the piezo disc. Then the output from the piezo disc is gonna go to the blend pot, along with a duplicated signal from the original input jack also going to the blend pot. And then of course, both of those are gonna go to the output jack. And that should theoretically give us a reverb pedal. Never tried this before, complete prototyping, but let's give it a shot. Whew, okay, so it's definitely summer in Texas. It was cool, you know, it was morning when I started, but it's already warm out. So let me show you what I've done so far. So I got the first part in, and so if you look here, here we go. So what I did is I had to rig up kind of a little, uh, just makeshift something to hold this in place, the little transducer in place. And so I got some pieces of wood there holding that in place. I got the amp board mounted down here in the corner and put jack out bo amp board. And then the LED is right here. And if I turn this on, you can the LED actually lights up, but I'm not sure it's so bright out here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but so it does work. And then I got the um, nine volt mounted up there. It's actually mounted through the box there. <clears throat> and then I took the echo mic apart and I took the little Thing that attached it to the cone and the echo mic and i and i just super glued that right on to the transducer there so that's going to put this into the spring just for the heck of it i plugged something into it turned it on and i can feel this vibrating so it is working um, so the next step is i got to figure out where i'm going to anchor the other end of the spring um, and how i'm going to do the pickup so let's keep going getting warmer by the way i have this wonderful thing on my face i know it's very attractive okay i got the other side in place so if you look here i've got the blend pot well here let's look at this i got the blend pot and the out jack in place and on this side we've got essentially the level jack and the in jack so this is working out nicely now i've got the battery as i showed before and then what i've done here let's see if you can see this is on the transist or uh, excuse me the transducer i glued that little uh plastic piece and then the spring is in between here and then the spring goes to a piezo here. The piezo I've actually got suspended to this side with a piece of dental floss. I actually just drilled two small holes in the piezo and suspended it there. And then the input from the piezo goes to this blend pot. And then I got two other wires here that need to go back to the input jack to get the clean signal. I probably should have wired those before I mounted the jack, so I'm gonna have to unmount that wire that up and then put it back together and then we should be able to test this thing so we're close okay guys i think we are done so this is the input side you can see there this is the the uh little amp knob and there's an led right here and i think i tried to show you that earlier and you couldn't really probably see it light up but it definitely lights up this is the output side here's our blend knob here and our output jack so there we go you can see everything in there and uh i guess the next step is to try it out it's either gonna work or it's not but i'm done being outside we're doing the rest of this video inside because it's hot out here today okay folks so i just plugged it in to test it out uh off camera and it does work however it does not work in the way that i thought it was gonna work um i'll show you more of that in a second we'll do some clips in just a second now, first of all, as you can see here, I've got this baby plugged in and... It's a real spring reverb. Can you hear that? Hopefully the camera's picking that up here. No way! It's a real spring reverb. There you go. Um, so it does work, but here's the problem. The blend pot doesn't work 
in the way that I thought it was gonna work. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go all the way fully dry. So full dry signal here. So you can hear that is fully dry. So now if I turn it back down here, I'll just do this. If I turn it, you can hear it starts to get quieter as I come towards the middle. And then if I get to the full middle, you get no sound at all. And if I go back the other way, we start to get sound again. So what I thought it was gonna do is I thought it was going to fade between the uh, wet signal and the dry signal and in instead it's fading between the dry signal and zero. So it did not do what I hoped to do. Um, but you can go fully wet with it and it sounds pretty awesome. Here, check this out. So you could see you get some deep spring in there. Now in the same way, you can turn it back and get a quiet reverb. And again, if you go to full center, nothing, no sound. So it's not working like I hoped it would work. Um, maybe that's the type of blend pot that I got. Um, but what I was expecting, I thought it would blend between the two sounds and it's not doing that. All right, there you have it, folks. That was a day spent out in the workshop prototyping and trying to create a spring reverb. And even though it did not work out quite as I expected, I'm not upset with that because it still does make some cool sounds and I learned a lot and it sets me up perfect for a round two. So what I think I need for the next round is I need to figure out a little fade circuit. I'll probably have to find an active circuit, maybe powered off the same nine volt and actually let it fade between the two signals because the blend pod is not doing what I want it to do. But I think if I could do that, I could probably get a really nice sweet spot. Because as you heard, when you go fully wet, you lose a lot of the highs and fully dry, you just, you don't get any of that cool spring sound. But I think this is progress. This actually makes me happy today uh, that I did this. And, and hopefully somebody besides me learned something by watching this video. If you appreciate what I do on this channel, I'd really love it if you would subscribe for me. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up.